Roger Waters is known worldwide for having been one of the founders of Pink Floyd, one of the most important psychedelic rock groups in the history of music. But it is also because of his controversial statements and positions in certain situations. Not to vary, the composer also revealed what bands are the ones he hates the most. He commented that, although he does not usually listen to modern music or music made by contemporary music groups, he believes that what these new bands make is, for the most part, narcissistic music, and totally oriented towards mass consumption. A statement that, it is not strange to him, but it did not go unnoticed by colleagues in the public, who divided opinions on social networks. The Sex Pistols As the legend goes, John Lydon was recruited by the Sex Pistols when he was spotted sporting a ragged t-shirt with the words, I hate Pink Floyd, scribbled across it. Thus, it is perhaps no surprise that Waters wasn't all that fond of their snarling, sneering ways. The Sex Pistols were just trying to make noise, he told Rolling Stone. It was so clearly contrived. You know, they were managed by a bloke who ran a shop selling silly clothes. He then rather callously confined their legacy to the immortalizing impact of a youthful death. And then one of them died, so you got that iconic thing that lives on. If somebody dies, that's always good. Except for him, obviously, and his mom and dad, and his girlfriend Nancy. But for everybody else, it's brilliant, he stated. While there are those who say that Swipe underplays the impact of punk, his former bandmate David Gilmour more measuredly asserted, I don't think we felt alienated by punk. We just didn't feel it was particularly relevant to us. We weren't frightened by it. Adding, A lot of good things came out of punk, but there were an awful lot of people leaping on it as a bandwagon who leapt off when they got to the top. U2 Once more, Waters' dislike of U2 comes from a public spat with the band. Waters seemed to recall that U2 were dismissive of his pet project, The Wall, and boy, did he not like that. I remember when we did The Wall, being criticized by Bono, he told Rolling Stone. You two are a very young band, and they're going in a mock Irish accent. Oh, we can't stand all that theatrical nonsense that Pink Floyd do. We just play our music and the songs unto themselves and blah blah blah. Waters wasn't having any of it, and thought that the youngsters quickly left their original ethos, and clung to his coattails once a more commercial side of rock beckoned. Oh, really? He questioned. All they did for the rest of their fucking career was copy what I'd been doing and continue to do. So good luck to them, but what a load of bullshit. If you lead them, people will follow. In fairness, U2's recent live shows couldn't possibly be more bombastically performative if they somehow managed to summon an actual UFO from orbit, ACDC and Van Halen. As Waters has established many times over, his interest in modern music and forms beyond the esteemed songwriters is limited. He told Joe Rogan during a three-hour conversation, I'm not interested in most popular music. I'm not really interested in loud rock and roll, which some people are and they love it. But I couldn't care less about ACDC or Eddie Van Halen or any of that stuff. He continued, It's just, who? I don't go. Who? Because obviously, I know the name. And I'm sure Eddie's brilliant and a great guitar player and wonderful. It just doesn't interest me. Waters' guitar playing is far more classically orientated in origin, however. His songwriting, likewise, is grounded in a less flamboyant fashion. There is stuff going on here that is fundamentally important to all of our lives, he states, and the fun thrills of rocking out for the sake of it seem to miss that point in his eyes. Pink Floyd The only thing more prone to a breakup than a band is a sitcom couple made of Lego, but when it comes to Waters breaking up with his former band, you have one of the bitterest bust-ups of all time. Waters might have loved the band he founded for decades, but now he stretches the strength of the word hate. In December 1985, Waters finally formally quit the band that he had co-founded. When he did so, he assumed that the whole group would disband. They did not. This rift grew irreparable once Waters took his former bandmates to court. His high court battle was to prevent them from using the name, claiming that the group was a spent force of creativity and they would ruin its legacy after he left. The resultant legal battle lasted for two years. It might have been settled out of court, but that was only the start. Waters later cited his displeasure at seemingly being banned from the Pink Floyd website. I think he thinks that because I left the band in 1985, Waters stated, that Gilmore owns Pink Floyd, that he is Pink Floyd, and I'm irrelevant, and I should just keep my mouth shut. He would ultimately label his former bandmates toxic, and even say he didn't enjoy his time with them before the split, 
surmising, they were very snotty and snippy because they felt very insignificant, I think. Needless to say, he wasn't a man who was ever going to take the disbandment lightly. After all, music might be hostile, but Waters says even if he missed out, he still might be making enemies in a civil occupation. I could have been an architect, but I don't think I'd have been very happy. Nearly all modern architecture is a silly game as far as I can see.